All right, in the last two videos, we did um, limits as x approaches infinity uh, for the functions that approached infinity as x approached in infinity. And now we're going to do the ones where as x approaches infinity, the limit, the function approaches a number instead of just rises up and up and up. So that's going to require us to modify our definition a little bit. Uh, what it means for a function to approach a number, L, we're going to call it, is actually this. It says there exists a number n such that uh, this absolute value means the distance from f of x to L, which is the supposed limit, can is less than epsilon whenever x is less than n. Now what that means is that, um, all right, so let's see, we got a function here. What that means is that, uh, let's say that we have a, uh, let's say that we Suppose that a function is approaching some number, we'll call that L. We'll say that, 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 that so that's a Y value here. Uh, that means that, so we know that the, the, the function at some point is going to approach L and never stop, just like what we understand to be a uh, horizontal as asymptote. Now, what this means rigorously is that for any epsilon greater than zero, which is, you can think of epsilon as a tolerance. All right, so n no matter how small, so we'll take epsilon there and epsilon there. So what it is is if the limit as the function approaches infinity actually is L, then for these are supposed to be uh, equally spaced here. But uh, for any epsilon, no matter how small, uh, there exists a an x value n, which in this case appears to be here, such that whenever x is beyond n, whenever x is greater than n, the values of the function come within that tolerance. They come within epsilon units of that number and never escape again. So uh, let's take, for example, something... The easiest example I can think of is as x is the, the limit as x approaches infinity, a limit as x goes to infinity of 1 over x. Now everybody knows what this limit is. This limit is uh, clearly 0. Intuitively we understand that. We have, we've seen it in the algebra class and all that. But what that really means is, uh, we know it's positive so that's going to simplify things a little bit. Well, that means that no matter how small, so say the function goes like this, all right, if I want to ballpark it like that. It means that for any epsilon greater than zero, for any tolerance that you can give me, let's say that there's, I'll take a large one here, I'll call that length, I'll call that epsilon uh, sub one. Okay, so you have to imagine that this is a really small number. All right, there exists an n, which looks like it's going to be here, so I'll call that n1 beyond which the values of the function lie within epsilon units of zero. That's what that means. So you might say, okay, well, it'll work for, for, for that epsilon, but what if I take the epsilon and I shrink it down, say, to half its size? So let's say I go, I'll say epsilon sub 2. Well, if, that's, if the limit truly is zero, then there will be another corresponding n, n2 beyond which the function lies within that many units of zero, and so on and so on. If the, the, the limit really is zero, it means that for any epsilon greater than zero, no matter what the tolerance is, arbitrarily small, epsilon sub k, no matter how small you try to make it, there's there will always be some corresponding value of x, which we call n, past which the function falls within that value um, in distance to what the supposed limit is and never escapes. So it's trapped inside here no matter how small it's made. Now, uh, just to give a couple more drawings of this, because sometimes it's not exa exactly clear, uh, you could have something like, let's see, so uh, we don't even need to, I don't even need to draw in an, an x-axis. I'll just say that this is the value L. That's that. And so the function could could look like a lot of things. It could be like, go up and down, 
and then and close and then come back and then come, come back again right so no matter how small the epsilon is say that the epsilon is this far this distance and I'm using and it's got to be absolute value right because it could come at it from above or below I'll draw the solid lines to represent the epsilon now okay so in this case here if we let epsilon be that small distance and if the limit truly is L, then that means that there's going to be, so, so the x, the value of, of N here is not this. This is not a value of N that corresponds with this epsilon. Because while, um, or rather, uh, this one here, excuse me, that's, that's not N. Because e even though past that N, the values of the function come within epsilon units it leaves again at some point so that's not the correct n in this case but what it means is that there will always be some n somewhere eventually past which it comes within and never it escapes no matter how small it is so you could have this thing oscillating up and down up and down up and down forever you could have infinitely many oscillations there um, but there's going to be some end past which it comes inside and never escapes again. That's the idea. I hope I hope that's clear. Um, so what this turns out to be is just another game with uh, absolute value. It, well, well, it'll be uh, playing these games with inequalities again, only with absolute value inequalities. What we have to do is our job, if we suspect that the limit as x approaches infinity of some function is some number l, so we suspect that the function ap ap approaches l as x approaches infinity, what we have to do is we define some x value, which we call n, such that the distance between the values of the function and that number will be less than epsilon, no matter how small, arbitrarily small, whenever x is greater than n. Now I have a quick example of this, a nice example to break it in, to uh, sort of break us in to this concept here, and that is the one that I just showed, uh, the limit as x approaches infinity of one over x. We know that that limit, it, is zero. But what does it take to actually show that? It means that we have to find an n, so we have to find find an n such that such that uh, absolute one over x minus zero, because we suspect that zero is the limit. The distance between the values of the function and zero can be made less than epsilon whenever whenever x is greater than n. So we have to find such a value of, of n, and I'll show it works to actually show you the actual proof. It's not that tough. Um, but really, this uh, just like we started with the m's in the proofs where the function went to infinity, we're going to start with uh, the expression involving this here. So we have to find an n such that this inequality, this absolute value inequality, is true. So we start here and we do that forwards backwards thing again just to start us off. So uh, this statement here, let me just box this all. This statement that we want to show is equivalent to 1 over x. Uh, absolute 1 over x is less than epsilon. So we want to find an end past which this is true. So, uh, but since x is approaching infinity, we can drop the absolute value bars because everything is positive. So this is equivalent to one over x being less than epsilon. And then what I do here is I um, just cross multiply and I get one over epsilon is less than x. And I say, okay, I'll let n be equal to that number there. And then watch how this is gonna work. It's gonna work just like the infinity ones did. If we, uh, so we will let epsilon, so, so, so we kind of went through the discovery phase here of figuring out a value of n that's going to work, right? Once we uh, have the x is greater than this number, x being greater than this number is going to imply the truth of this inequality, which is what we wanted to show. So this is going to start off just like the other one did. It's just like the infinity ones did. And let's say let epsilon be given arbitrarily small. So all that we have to do is let x be greater than n, which is 1 over e epsilon. Now, th now, we're assuming that epsilon is a tiny number, like 1 trillionth or something like that. So 
uh, you got to realize that x being greater than this, 1 over 1 trillion, this is actually a very large number. So, and that's the way it's going to work. So uh, if we let x be greater than the reciprocal of the tolerance we are given, in this case, 1 over epsilon, then that implies x is greater than 1 over epsilon. And we can cross multiply and get uh, epsilon is uh, greater than 1 over x. And let me just switch this around which means that 1 over x is less than epsilon and since everything is positive we get absolute value and that's it we've proven what we wanted to prove so to make 1 over x uh, well actually I do have to put one last step in here just to show it that it's actually true 1 over x minus 0 because that was what we said the limit was can be made less than epsilon see all these statements are implied out of this so if you let epsilon be given, say that you make epsilon one trillionth, what we're saying here is that all that you got to do is let x be greater than one trillion, one over one trillionth, and that will um, that will make one over x less than that number, no matter how large it is. Now this is pretty obvious for the function one over x because we know, I mean, it's e it, it's easy to do. If I say to make one over x less than one tenth, it's obvious that you just have to make x greater than ten right? 1 11th, it's going to be less. So uh, this is the baby intro um, introduction, the, the first one that I wanted to do. So we'll do one that's a little bit more difficult, but not by too much. Uh, we will say We will do one where uh, where it's not zero. So we'll do the limit as x approaches infinity of, we'll go with, uh, let's see what I got. I have prepped x plus one over x minus one. Now we know what this limit is from algebra, uh, horizontal asymptote, the degrees are the same top and bottom. Uh, so this limit supposedly is going to equal one, or so we suspect. Uh, to actually rigorously prove that we have to find an n, we ha we have to find an n such that um, x plus one over x minus one minus one right the distance between the value of the function and the supposed limit it's approaching can be made less than epsilon whenever all right what whenever that means whenever uh, x is greater than n so we have to find a value of n based on epsilon that makes this inequality true. So again, uh, we'll start with the forwards backwards kind of treatment. We have, uh, see we have the multiple instances of the x's here, so it's gonna be a little bit harder to do, but not too much harder. All we have to do is play around with this and try to find some way to massage it and uh, get it so that we can get what we want out of it. So uh, we start with what we want to prove and then we start playing around with this uh, absolute value expression here to see if we can make it all come together. So uh, this statement is equivalent to if I just take these fractions and I add, well, if I add these up, I'll get x plus 1 over x minus 1 minus now instead of one, I'm gonna write x minus one over itself. We wanna show that, all right, this is equivalent to this, so that if I can show this, then this is gonna follow from it. So then all I gotta do is add this up, and the x's will cancel, and the ones will match up, so I'll get two over uh, x minus one absolute can be less than epsilon. And now I'm in good shape because I only have the one x left. Now, in this case, we're assuming that uh, x is going to infinity, so we can safely assume that x is greater than 1. So at this point, we can drop the absolute value bars and be satisfied that if we can show this, uh, we'll be all done. So then from here, all I got to do is just like I did with the last one, uh, switch up the denominator and the numerator here, and I'll get 2 over epsilon is less than x plus 1 and bring up, uh, that's a minus one, minus one, minus one. And so I'll bring over the one and get two over epsilon uh, plus one is less than x. And there, whoop, almost run out of room here, but there we have it. All right, this right here, this expression is what I will let n equal. So let n equal this number. 
And if I let n equal that, then supposedly all these inequalities can be reversed, and I'll end up with what I wanted to prove. So just keep an eye on this while I switch papers. Uh, supposedly, we said, now to actually prove th that this is true, um, we would say, let epsilon be given. And then th the claim is that n equals 2 over epsilon plus 1. Uh, if we let x be greater than that number, then that's going to, um, from this, it can be derived. The, uh, the statement that we wanted to show, which is this, so let's see how that goes. All I'm going to do is reverse the steps. You might want to try this yourself. It's not too bad. Um, so we're going to let this be true. So if epsilon is 1 trillionth, we'll let the value of n be 2 over 1 trillionth uh, plus 1. And that's going to do it. So we can do this. And so if this is true, then all I have to do is rearrange it. So that means that 2 over epsilon uh, will be less than x minus 1. And then I can switch these up and get 2 over x minus 1 will be less than epsilon. And since everything is positive, I can put absolute value bars around it at this point, so I will. And then, I get, and then I'm going to rewrite this 2 as the way it originally was. And put it in here, I'll say this originally came from x plus 1 over x minus 1 minus x minus 1 over x minus 1. All right, you can confirm that that indeed does equal um, 2 over x minus 1, or right, just by adding them up. And then this we is just the same as saying 1, x plus 1 over x minus 1 minus 1 is less than epsilon. Everything that we did here, all these steps were legal. So we started from this, and if, you know, let epsilon be given, and if it's true, then we could do all this and go all this way and come up with this no matter what. And this is what proves that the limit as x approaches infinity of x plus 1 over x minus 1 uh, does indeed equal 1 because we can make this uh, this expression arbitrarily small provided that uh, well yeah w w we can make it arbitrarily sm uh, small provided x is chosen to be or n rather is chosen to be no, x is chosen to be sufficiently large. Now, if we tried this with any other number aside from 1, it would have broken down someplace. All right? It wouldn't have been possible. We, because the limit can only be, a function can only have one limit as x approaches infinity. It can't approach two different things at, at, at once. And maybe I'll show that in an upcoming video. Uh, but it can only be one thing. So if you try this with any other number, no matter how uh, how close to one it is, someplace in here it's going to break down, and it'll fail. This reasoning just won't work. You won't be able to to make it work. But essentially, that is what a basic uh, limit is. Um, that's a basic limit problem, as x approaches infinity, where the limit is a number. And maybe in the next video, I will do a couple of other ones to uh, show you a little bit. Uh, a little bit of variation with how these things go.